All right, the question was asked on how to change out a roller assembly. So we're going to kind of go through that process here. And it doesn't matter, the pump we'll be using today is a 530 DU, but the previous series, the 500 series and the 520 series, all relatively the same. Watson Marla hasn't changed how that operation works. Um, we'll first talk about kind of why you would change out the roller assembly. And the roller assembly is located inside the case right here. Um, the biggest thing is we would change it if we were running some type of chemical that eventually, you know, after many, many years were to wreck one of the springs and maybe wreck a roller assembly and it would no longer be functioning, we would change it up. The other thing too is these pumps are really nice for the fact that I kind of got some examples out here that each roller assembly, if we check by the color code in the front side, is set up that it can do different pressures. So the blue one, for instance, is 60 to 100 PSI. The light tan colored one is 30 to 60 PSI. And the gray one is zero to 30 PSI. So the nice flexibility with this pump is we could actually switch out the roller assembly, run a higher pressure. Also, um, the elements themselves that would come with them or that you would order are come in different sizes. So the nice thing is, is we can go up or down in flow rates just changing out the uh, outside diameter of this tubing. So you just buy a larger or smaller. So what changes is the wall thickness stays the same. So each one of these recommended has a set wall thickness. The inside bore actually is what changes. So as the roller crushes it, the wall thickness is actually what's doing the sealing. The outside the internal bore moves more fluid. If we shrink the bore size, less fluid. I think we all get the point of that. So the change out is really simple. We open the tab. It's a flathead or standard screwdriver. Loosen it up. Pull the unit off. Uh, also, there's a a coupling inside of there that connects on there. Uh, in the inside you can tell it's slotted to meet up with the slotted portion of the shaft. So typically you would just need to change out the, the roller itself. If you did a full roller assembly, there's four screws here you can take off. Typically you can just clean out the case and you'll be fine. You don't necessarily need to change out the, the case itself. And the parts themselves can be ordered as a, a roller assembly where you're gonna get the actual case and the roller, or you can just do the roller itself. So that's how we would remove that. Some things to check once we do get this point is we've got this oil lip seal here, make sure that that's in good shape, cleaned up. Uh, it's really important depending on which chemicals we're using or just in general, a good practice of once we do get a leak and the leak detector would trip on here, that we want to make sure that this all gets rinsed out and cleaned up. Because uh, most of these chemicals will end up eating the stainless steel that everything is made out of in this roller assembly. So also over time, this rubber will build up kind of on this roller. So we want to make sure that we get those rollers cleaned off really well. Yeah, the nice part about these Watson Marla pumps is it's minimal maintenance. You can, everything can pretty much be done with a flathead screwdriver. Very few parts and pieces to it. So 
So now we make sure that we get that coupling back on. Like I said before, the slotted portion, if you look in the inside of the coupler, it's slotted. Get that guy down. Rollers back on, tighten the screw. All right, and for the sake of, let's say that we actually changed out this roller assembly, then we would have went to that 30 to 60 PSI, and we would have changed to a, a different bore size. For instance, this is a, uh, a 6.4. So we'll go through kind of an example of how to do that. So we'd hit the menu button, we go to general settings, we go down to tube size, and we would change it to 2 point millimeter. The first portion is going to be the wall thickness. The second portion where it says 6.4 millimeter, we'd go ahead and select that we had changed the actual tube size. So once we do that, the pump is smart enough to know that its operating range is changed in here. I do suggest going through a calibration afterwards, but the also the other thing we'll kind of talk about quick is there's two different, so we've got the element style that would go with these three roller heads. And then we have the continuous tubing. So if we were to change out to a continuous tubing, I didn't have a roller assembly here. It'd be a black color, but you can get by tube that's actually comes in a 50 foot roll and you can cut off just what you need to go inside of there. It's got the clips that hold it in instead of the actual element itself. Um, also comes in a wide variety of bore sizes so your flows can go up or down. Also another great option from Watson Marlow. Um, like always, if you have any more questions, feel free to comment and I'll try to make a video on the questions that you have. Thank you.